So let me give you a quick look into a Django application so you can see how it differs from something like Flask and Streamlit. So this is the application. Now let me show you what it looks like in code. Now remember, Django is a much more complicated web framework. It's capable of doing a lot more and has a lot more features built in. That's why we actually require all of this code you see on the left hand side of my screen in order to build this really simple application. Whereas previously we just had one or two files, now we have like 20 or 30 files in order to do the same thing. That's because we have things like URL mapping, where I can map different URLs into different independent applications. I have this entire to-do application, which is responsible for, well, the to-do app. So again, inside of Django, you need to know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to make a fully functioning site, as well as, of course, the Django framework. The difference here is that it comes with a lot more features. For example, it already has things set up for like test cases. It has things for models and database management, which we didn't have out of the box with Flask. We would have had to set that up. We have different apps so we can register an application and get things like an admin panel for our app. And actually, let me show you what that looks like. So by default, Django comes configured with this admin panel. So if you go to the slash admin route, you'll be brought to a page like this where you can sign into an administration dashboard and start looking at all of the data that your application has. Now, I won't go into this right now, but the point is that it has all of these other features and you can see there's all this other stuff going on. I have all these different settings and things that I can configure, like the middleware, the root URL configuration, the templating engine that I'm using, the database that I want to connect to, the authentication validators, 